So we now have this nice random animation that loops and repeats perfectly. Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to make this animation representing like an AI assistant icon, um, for example, similar to Siri, made out of like different colors and shapes. And I really hope you will enjoy this one. And if you do, please don't forget to leave that like. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender, hit that subscribe so you don't miss on new tutorials every week. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and first of all let me select the light and the cube press x and delete we'll leave the camera in place now let's press shift a and we'll go mesh and round cube if you don't have this option here go edit preferences add-ons and search for extra and then check the box on add mesh extra objects close the preferences and you will see this option right here let's create this and let's now switch the preset to quad sphere and i prefer this over the uv sphere because it's made out of quads and generally it gives like better um, results when it comes to shading um, so let's close this and we'll leave this at a default size so for now we'll just add solidify modifier so let's enable x-ray view let's zoom in a little bit and now go to the modifiers and let's add solidify modifier and here you can increase the thickness let's go something like this okay and now we'll collapse this and add yet another modifier and that'll be the subdivision surface modifier let's increase the levels to two so it's nice and smooth right click and shade smooth and basically that's all when it comes to like this glass sphere so we can just press h to hide it and now let's press shift a and we'll go mesh and circle and let's leave it at the default 32 vertices so now press tab to go into the edit mode and we'll press ctrl f for a face menu and choose grid fill and now right click and choose subdivide to make this more dense and right click again and do the same thing again so it's uh, much more dense and now we can tab out and let's go ahead and add another modifier here and this time it will be a displace modifier and now we'll choose the z direction let's leave the coordinates as they are for now and now we'll create a new uh, texture so let's create new and let's go to the texture settings and we'll switch this to clouds and for example increase the size to something like i don't know 1.1 we'll see about that later and now if you go back to the modifiers you can reduce the strength to something more subtle like 0 0.5 or maybe 0 0.7 we'll see about that so now we have this nice surface and we want to animate this so let's press shift a and we'll create an empty plane axis here in the middle and let's go to the object data properties and let's just increase this so it's easier to select when we later have more objects in the scene but so far this should be enough and this doesn't affect the scene whatsoever and now let's press shift a and we'll add another empty and this time to make the distinction just select the cube and now let's reduce this here like this and press g then y and move it to the side like three meters or so it doesn't really matter that much and now hold shift select the first empty and press ctrl p and parent to object so now if you move the empty for example rotate the cube will rotate with it and we'll use this to map our displacement so first of all let's set up our animation a little bit so here i will choose like 120 frames and in the output settings let's switch this to 30 fps so that'll give us like four seconds of animation and right now let's go ahead um, select our circle object go into the modifiers and here we'll switch coordinates from local to object and just use this eyedropper to select the cube and now you will see how this affects this and now if you change for example the scale of the main empty you're able to scale this up or down um, that's why the scale um, of the texture didn't really matter that much so we can adjust it right here and when you move the cube you basically move the displacement texture so for example rotating this on x-axis can create this nice wavy animation and let's adjust the scale a little bit more and now um, just to make sure this looks great let's increase the strength back to one for example and now let's select the main empty and we'll create the first keyframe right here so press n for the side panel and let's right click the x rotation and insert single keyframe and now we'll move this to 121 and let's set this to 360 right click and insert single keyframe 
and right now the animation starts and slows down uh, which is not optimal so let's go here in the timeline press a to select all keyframes press t for interpolation and choose linear so now this will nicely loop around like this and to make this a little bit more interesting we can additionally animate the scale as well so let's select the main empty and let's expand this and first of all let's right click on the scale and insert keyframes we want to keyframe x y and z and let's expand this and now we'll select these three keyframes press shift d and duplicate them to the other side and now let's go towards the middle for example frame 60 and now we'll just scale this down a little bit and right click and insert keyframes so now not only we are rotating but we are also kind of changing the scale up and down and again we'll select everything press t and choose linear interpolation so it loops nicely so we now have this nice random animation that loops and repeats perfectly so um, that's for the shape now let's refine this a little bit so let's collapse and let's add another modifier and this will be solidify modifier and let's increase the thickness here a little bit like this and let's add another modifier and there'll be subdivision surface modifier with two levels of subdivision right click and shade smooth and a lot of times i get these comments that i go a little bit quickly over these things um, but youtube has its limitations and i have to create these videos every week so my time here is very limited uh, but if you're new to the world of 3 dm blender and you want to see more detailed and in-depth explanations be sure to check out my courses i carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills through local illustrations all the way to full character illustration and textured environments and some of the episodes and topics have eight or even nine hours so you can see how this will be very different from the short and quick youtube format so if you're interested please check out the link in the description now let's go back to the solidify modifier and we can increase the thickness a little bit like this and now let's select the main empty hold shift select the shape press ctrl p and parent so now we are able to rotate this or scale it up independently of the animation and the animation will still happen in a similar way so let's make more of these so first of all let's hold shift and hit right bracket so we select everything parented and do it once again so we select even the children of the child objects and now press alt d to duplicate and alt d again to duplicate once more so now you can see we have circle one two three right here and we can select some of these make them smaller and press r twice to create a different rotations for these and for the third one as well let's rotate it and let's make it smaller and now we can select all of these make them smaller and, and press alt h to unhide the main sphere let's hold control and deselect it so we can now better see the scale like this and basically this will be um, the final animation that we'll have in place and now it will be all about these materials and render settings so first of all let's go to the render settings i will switch to cycles here and gpu and enable the noising and let's reduce the samples to something like 64 um, both for viewport and render i will render out for you know lower sample count for the test purposes and then if you're satisfied with your animation you can ramp it up and you know let it run over the night or something and for the denoise i will choose optics um, because i have the nvidia rtx and now let's collapse this let's hit zero to look from the camera and now i'll press ctrl b to limit the render preview only for the camera bounce so we don't render anything outside of this and hold z and switch to rendered so this is not much yet but let's press shift a and we'll add the first light and this will be the area light press g then z and move it up and let's make it large so it creates nice and soft shadows and now in the object data properties let's switch this to disk and let's increase the power to something like 500 and now let's press shift a and we'll create a plane let's press s to scale it up and press g then z to move it down so we have some background there as well and now we'll take care of the materials here so let's select the outer sphere go to the material settings and create a new material and this will be the glass so let's call it glass 
And now only thing we need to do is increase the transmission and reduce the roughness to something like 0 0.5, 0 0.05 or 0 0.1, depending on how clear um, of the glass you want this to be. And now for the reflections, I will move this light a little bit back because this creates this large reflections in the front. So press G, then Shift Z and move this towards the back and it will create this nice reflections on the top of the sphere. Of course, you can use the HDRI uh, lighting for this if you want more realistic reflections. But here I want to keep this more clean, more simple to have full control over these reflections. So this animation can be clean and there are no like real world reflections there. So let's move on now and let's select one of these inside and let's add the same glass material there and you will see all of them change. But now we'll click this duplicate icon and duplicate this glass and let's change the color to something like a light blue color. And of course you can change the IOR here, but I want to keep this strong for this type of material. So right now uh, what I want to do is to give each of these a little bit different color. Um, of course, you can do this through shader nodes and applying them randomly, but here we have only three objects, so no need to do that. Let's just select the other one and let's click here and choose the object that will separate the object data from the material. And now we can choose the same material, but now duplicate it and change its color. So we'll see this one will be different. Let's go a little bit violet color. And for the third one, we can choose object here as well and again duplicate the material and go like a little greenish tone so we have something like this in place and now this will be all about those lights so first of all let's create some background material increase the roughness and let's say something a little bit bluish in terms of color now let's press shift a and we'll add another area light Let's look from the top by pressing 7 on an ampad and move it back like this. And now let's switch this to disk and let's give this some really strong value like 1500. And now you will see this start to come to life and this will create a nice backlight. And let's give this like warmer color a little bit like this. And now let's press shift A and we'll create a point light. And let's look from the front and move it down a little bit. So press G then Z, move it down. And let's give this like 500. This will be a light inside of the sphere. And you can see it creates these reflections right there. And you can, of course, increase the radius a little bit. If you want, you can make it really large. But something like this should be enough. Okay, and one more thing for the glass material, make sure you have the base color all the way to white. You will see how different this will look. If you have just a tiny bit of a gray, it will make the glass really dark. So make sure it's all the way to white. And same for these other ones, make sure um, they are bright when you change their color. Just like this. And right now there's one more thing we can do for all of these. So let's press slash on an ampad to isolate one of these. Tap into the edit mode and we can alt click the loop on the outside and hold alt and shift and add to the selection. And now press E to extrude, right click to release and S to scale. So we create like a ring around this. Now press three for face select and alt click this loop. And let's create a new material here and Hit assign and now we'll switch this to emission. And let's increase the strength to something like 15. And now if you go back, you will see this nice ring around it. So let's go for these. And of course, um, we separated their materials. So we'll need to add the same material here as well. So let's create a new material slot and hit assign. And same for the third one create a new one, go into the edit mode by pressing tab and assign the material. So we have these nice light rings around it and now we can modify the color if you want to something like blue. Okay, and don't forget if you want to render this out, let me just go closer a little bit. 
um, you want to go to the render settings and enable motion blur. And now in the camera settings, let's select the camera. We can enable depth of field. And here in the viewport display, enable limits so you can see um, the distance. And let's bring it closer and you will see this cross appearing. And the moment it starts to disappear in the sphere, and that's when you hit the object you want to focus on. Or you can go a little bit deeper if you want to more focus on these rings inside. And now for the f-stop, let's go something really low, like 1.2. And now let's play with the background. We can make it darker, for example, if you want this to stand out. And for the world color, we can choose something bluish to blend the colors together a little bit better. And now in the render settings, color management, you can choose different contrast look and play with the exposure. But this is something you should have as a result. Now let's play back the animation. And this is really hardly visible now because the refraction takes a toll on your computing power and your GPU. So the best thing to do is to render this out. So let's go to the output settings and switch the PNG to FFmpeg. And for the encoding, I will choose MP4. Choose your folder here and just go render and render animation. Wait out your frames. So um, this is something you should have as a result. Of course, I played around with this a little bit more, you know, added some uh, filler content so it looks a little bit better on the thumbnail, of course, and, you know, played with uh, lighting a little bit. So if you're interested to see what changes I made and how, how this is made, uh, be sure to download the scene from the Gumroad or the Patreon down in the description. So that's it for today's tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed this one. And again, if you did, please leave that like. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.